Hey, Matching Hero, Jay here. Anyone that knows me knows that I am all things vintage. So today we came to Wixom to talk to Herminso and Nate to look at the history of electronics starting from this, the vacuum tube. Let's go talk to them. Minso, good to see you, my friend. Hey, thanks for your time. Thanks for feeding my uh, my passion for all things vintage. Yes, of course. It's thanks for coming. Yeah. So, what do you think is there? These are awesome looking vacuum tubes. I know you are. <laughs> I, am, vacuum tube collector. I am a collector, man. These are so awesome. Yeah. How old do you think this one is? Oh, man. Uh, mine are from the 60s. So, it? 60s? Is that so older? Uh, 1922. 1922. Yes. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, it's good. made by one of the first uh, vacuum tubes made by uh, Western Electric. Okay. And I have you have it? Seven of those. Okay. Here. Yes. Uh, I can I can show you a good one. For example, this one is more oh. recent, maybe 1940s. Gorgeous. I love these Coke bottle style yeah. uh, tubes. They're beautiful. And I have more images of okay uh, and like those one. So you can see they. They're becoming a little more complex. Sure, uh, sure. Even more. There's a lot more detail too. Not only is, is the glass beautiful, but looks like there's a lot more electronics going on in there. Yeah? That's correct. Uh, one more hint for the illustration. Yeah. Uh, but let me let me show you something at all. What are those? What do you think are those? It's transistor. So, a transistor. Okay. A very old transistor too. All right. I think it's transistor. Okay. And I have, so you can see that it, it becomes from something that is big like this. So in all, to something that is quite smaller. This is a, a, one of the first prototype of a transistor. Wow, so these are of course doing the same job of mud. Exactly. So at the beginning of the 1900s, uh, you know that the old radios and the electronics used to operate with the vacuum tube. Yep, yep. But once the transistor was invented, a revolution was created. Yeah. Everything started to become a smaller, smaller, and small pack. It's amazing, Herman. So, you know, I, 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 when you look at the transistors, you, uh, you see these little caps. It doesn't look like anything, but this is actually fantastic to be able to see what's going on. You know, with the vacuum tubes, it's easy to see. You can look right into it. How, how did we collect see, these uh, gorgeous images? Yeah, what is, wait, X-ray. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, wait. Can I pause this? Can we have a look at the machine that is? Yes, yes, I can, I can uh, introduce someone here that okay. will show you uh, the machine we use to collect those images. Oh man, that'd be cool. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, come in. Let me introduce to Nathan. Nathan, this day. Hey, hey Nathan, nice to meet you. Uh, good, we're standing in front of the impressive machine here. What is this thing? So I know Herman so showed you some pictures yeah. of the tubes and the transistors. Yeah. This is the, uh, the machine that we use to actually capture some of those images. So I know some of those are a little bit older. So yeah. as you see here, we have something a little bit newer. We're starting <laughs> starting to get into the yeah. chip size things. So I, I got to stop you because first of all, I suspect, well, obviously I'm sitting in front of an x-ray machine, but which I've done before, but something's different about this one. <laughs> We're, yeah. So what's really cool with the Versa is not only the resolution that we're able to get, mm -hmm. But then inside of here, we can actually move the source and the detector. Right, there's two rails. Yeah, exactly. Moving. So, so uh, what does that get? So what that allows us to do is that actually allows us to give us something called resolution at a distance. So even with large objects, we can move the source and detector around so that we can get a really, really high resolution while staying relatively far away. That's crazy. It was crazy. So what other? What other applications could you could you get by by doing that methodology? I guess. So one of the things is, as you know, as I as I kind of say, is you know, tolerances tolerances aren't getting any larger. So we need to start focusing smaller and smaller. Um, but we can also take large items such as you know the thing that we carry with us every single day, a cell phone. <laughs> uh, we can actually scan that entire cell phone if we want to, and then we can push in and we can actually look at even the the solder between the layers and the chips. In this machine? In this exact same wow. machine. Oh, wow. Can I see that? Absolutely. All right, cool. Let's have a look. Okay. All right, so these may look familiar. Herminso kind of showed you these yeah. before. So here we have a cell phone. We yeah. carry it every day. We're able to push in and see some amazing things on this. Wow, wow. So these are the circuit boards that are crammed into all of that computing power that used to be that, 
<laughs> exactly. Now we're now we're looking at the layers. We're looking at the solder joints relatively. Solder joint reviews. Yeah. So now we actually push in and we're able to see on the circuit board the individual layers, the solder balls, everything like that. So we're miniaturizing uh, our computing power, but you need something to really go down in there now. If we were to do all of this computing power using like those old vacuum tubes, that thing would be... Be like the size of this room. Wow, wow. So as we really miniaturize, you really gotta, you really gotta use something like this Versa to, to get there. Absolutely. I'm gonna throw something at you guys though. Because... Cheers. All right, got it. Check, you guys can make beautiful images. And this thing uh, uh, for inspection, it works. I'm a metrologist and I need to measure right and i know it's not always the same thing for you to be able to look at a, a beautiful measurement doesn't mean good metrology does this have anything for me yeah we actually have a solution for you okay. and, uh, we have this artifact that you can use to uh, calibrate a machine for okay. dimensional metrology i mean so what is this i i can't even see anything is this something look at it you are supposed to be looking at that it's very tiny it's the size of a uh, uh, it fits in the tip of a finger. This is a calibration artifact? It's a calibration artifact. Yeah. That... Wow. So you put that inside of the system. Okay. Uh, to make sure that the distance between the different room spheres are uh, accurate. And you do some uh, internal calibration. Yeah, so you can you calibrate can... this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Once you do that, then you can take images. For example, wow. remember the camera lens uh, from the cell phone? This is actually an, an image from the camera lens. Wow. So it's cool. It's not just about beautiful images. Uh, and in fact, you see a very high resolution image. Yeah. The lens uh -huh. uh, of, of the camera lenses assembly. And then you see now in three dimensions. Yeah. With the dimensional metric. So it's a beautiful image you can measure with. <laughs> yeah. That's insane, y'all. That's insane. It, it, and, and I can imagine as my brain spins with this, uh, the amount of cool applications that, that, that comes across this machine. Absolutely. Um, I would love to come back and dive into some of these. Is that cool if I do that? Anytime. Oh, great. I was like, well, Winston had this. No, thank you. Dave. Thank you for uh, showing me uh, my passion, which are in these old vintage tubes, but expanding my mind on um, some of the things that we can do uh, with this bursting machine. I look forward to seeing you guys again. Hey, sure. Um, absolutely. And for you out there, hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next time.